Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I thought I'd do a quick channel update. This video will not show how to fix anything or how to fit any parts to my car. This is more just an update of where I am with my YouTube channel and what I've been up to lately and what you can expect to see in videos coming up soon. So how is my channel doing? Recently, my channel reached 2,000 subscribers, which is really, really great. And thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed. I bought a, a winch to celebrate, which I will be fitting very soon in behind here. So what have I been up to lately? Well, I've been doing a lot of 3D printing, mainly fulfilling orders. I've also been printing brackets, these parts and other parts like my lift spacers. I sell on my website fl2lift.com and the money that I get from selling those parts helps to fund all of this equipment and parts and things that I have to buy to film to make these videos. So it's kind of like a, a sort of a self-funding sort of thing really. Okay, so what have we been printing lately? Air horn bracket there. Uh, we've got spotlight mount brackets. The, these are really, really popular. This is my design for the, the spotlight mounting bracket or, or a light bar. And you, you can mount sort of two of them or, or you can mount them on the lower, the lower level there uh, to mount spotlights. I'll show a couple of pictures now of various light bars and spotlights that people have mounted. As well as the spotlight mounts which are available for the pre-facelift grill or the facelift grill. I also do these amber strobe brackets, as you can see here, fitted here with the 12 LED amber strobe. I've actually recently sourced 20 LED ones, the same size as these, but twice as bright. So, um, this is the rear part, so the way these work is that goes on sort of like that way round with this diamondy bit here locating into these diamond shaped holes and then that piece goes there a couple of screws through and it holds it in a kind of a clamp on the grill okay uh, air horn bracket there i mentioned okay so i'm selling these if you would like to fit air horns okay so the bracket you can see there Okay, so I'll just move that out of the way. And the beauty of this is you can just lift it out to get through the fuse box. So it fits there onto this sort of bit of, couple of bits of metal there. You can put a couple of little retaining screws in if you need to, but uh, there's, there's no need. There's no need really. Um, that is there. The bonnet closes like that and it's, it's not really gonna, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, so I've been selling quite a few of these lately. Here's a quick video of one of the Facebook group members giving another Freelander to beep as he passed it on the dual carriageway. So what else do I sell? Various other brackets and things. Uh, lift spacers, okay. So polyurethane lift spacers available in yellow, red, orange, or black. Front spacers look like this. There's a front spacer, okay, and that is about 25 millimeters thick at the outer edge and about 20 millimeters thick where the, where the guide tubes are, where the bolts go through. On the rear, 30 millimeters, or these are 40 millimeters thick. So I will be doing a video very soon talking about these lift spacers. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the the 3D print mold mold anti mold buck call it what you like but that's the 3D print that I use to then make a silicone mold which I then use to make the polyurethane spacers. Okay, so it's taken me many years uh, to get that right. Uh, the original designs were nothing like that i didn't even have a 3d printer then I, I i tried to make them out of clay and plaster of paris and it was a bit of a mess um so now i've gone for the sort of the the second version really of these spaces the old ones were great they worked fine but they were not that accurate 
and by 3D printing it, I can get the design absolutely spot on. Well, okay. okay, so I recently did a video where I asked people to vote for the next project that I was going to do, and thank you very much to those of you who voted. Top of the list, actually, it was not spacers, it was not snorkel, it was not the Wabasto, it was a turbocharger. Okay, so I've got a second hand turbocharger here, and I want to take it all apart, take off the actuator here, have a look at how this kind of rod thing here moves the variable vanes inside the turbo, and as well as taking that apart and seeing how it works, I want to sort of see if I can do anything to make make the turbo generate more boost and, and make the engine more powerful. Okay, so that came out first in the list of videos that, that people voted for. Next on the list was the snorkel. Alright, so the snorkel goes here and I did three videos about two years ago and I got as far as actually developing a snorkel airbox that fits on here with a kind of flexi pipe and that's as far as I got okay that project had to be put on hold because there's too many other things on the go I will be resurrecting that project this year okay this summer this summer UK time so in a few months time I'm going to get that started again and hopefully put it into production it's going to take a bit of time though that was in second place third place was the lift spacers so i'll do a video talking about the history of my lift spacers all of the previous designs and all the iterations and effort that i put in over the last sort of four or five years to get these to the state that they are now okay so it's been a long difficult journey and i've now got really good spacers which people are buying and are fitting and they're very happy with them powerful uk who also have a youtube channel and sell lots and lots of parts for the freelander 2 recently did a video series of three videos showing fitting of the lift spaces okay so if you look up powerful uk you'll see uh, three videos showing how they fitted these so that's the lift spaces okay now fourth on my list i won't go through the whole list of projects that people voted for uh, I'll just go as far as fourth place, which was the Webasto heater. Now, I don't have the heater here. Um, I will show a little clip now of the Webasto heater on its kind of prototyping sort of breadboard that I set up. And I got it running and it heated a bucket of water up and I need to fit that to the car. However, as you can see, the weather here is absolutely gorgeous and it's really hot and it's not a cloud in the sky. So fitting a fuel burning heater right at the moment isn't top priority, although I do need to get it done before the weather turns cold in the autumn. That's the Webasto heater. Okay, I will be doing those four videos, turbo, snorkel, or spacers, Webasto, in that order very soon. As well as those four big videos, I have a few other little videos to talk about and film. Top of the list is something that's a bit worrying, and that is theft. Theft of rear light clusters. So somehow, low-life scumbags have been stealing lights from the back of Freelander 2s. Uh, it does tend to be the later lights, the ones with the kind of clear, clear, or the LED type. They cost about three to four hundred pounds to replace. I don't know if that's worth a one light or for two. I don't know. Uh, there was a poor young lady down in Gosport in Hampshire in the UK and her lights were stolen and she bought new lights and fitted them and a week later they were stolen as well. So it's not good. It's not good. So what I want to do is do a video showing what can be done to protect the lights and, and it is going to be really difficult to film a video about rear light theft without giving away how they're stealing them 
okay so I, I don't really want it to be an instructional video to, to thieves saying oh, this, this is how you steal the lights what I would say is there are two screws here and that's it okay so somehow they're getting at those now if I shut the boot the gap is pretty tight how on earth they're getting a screwdriver in there I don't know but I do have light guards fitted Okay, and they do take up a bit of a gap. Okay, so if you've got light guards fitted, it's a lot more difficult for somebody to get a tool in there and steal them. I still don't understand how they can get to that screw there because that is covered by the boot lid when it's shut. But somehow they're managing it. Okay, so that's rear light theft top of my list of other things to talk about so what else light bar brackets okay so there's a lot of people waiting for these waiting for them very patiently for them to go into production not ready yet as I've been busy with other things here are the light bar brackets that I made and here's my light bar covered in bugs okay so there's an issue here and that is that the light kind of like touched the bracket there and I had to kind of file it away so what I needed to do is make a sort of a, a slightly modified version of this bracket so this is not 3d printed this is actually cast in a hard rigid polyurethane resin uh, using silicone mold so 3d printed the original item and then made a mold and then cast it uh, I need to bring that out a bit. I need to bring this whole bit, this mounting point, out a bit. Um, so I have been working on that. There's a little bit of a back burner. Okay, so here is the modified bracket. All right. However, it's a bit of a mess on this side. I tried to put some sort of like kind of star thing here to help the uh, the end of the light bar grip the bracket. Um, that is just no good at all for making a mould. So I thought, right, what can I do to improve the print quality there? So I tried messing around with the various support settings because that's printed like that. And under here is a support structure uh, and it's that that's leaving the mess. In the end, I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll go for two parts. So that's printed like that. That's printed like that. And then the two bits can sort of somehow fit together. Like the idea at first was that I'd glue the two bits together, then make the mould, and then I'd have a nice clean rear side like that. Um, tried that, didn't really work. So then I've ended up with this. Okay, so it's a two-part, two-part bracket with some bolts and nuts there okay so that can actually be cast in two pieces and then screwed together now this is just a 3d print mock-up but that will go up like that and you can see there the mounting hole is further out and that will be then cast in black polyurethane like this one and i don't think that looks too bad actually these these stainless bolts and nuts will be nice and strong there's enough thickness there for the strength and what it also means is that if people want to fit a shorter light bar like a 40 inch or a 38 inch then I can just make different pieces of this this end piece here and this piece can be the same and you just bolt on sort of either one like that or that goes straight or one that goes that way depending on the length of the light bar so that's nearly there i've got these left and right i just need to fit them to the car check they work make the molds and start pouring away and get those for sale on the website okay so they will be available very soon i know people are waiting and i know that they've been very patient for Quite a few months now what else have i been up to lately uh i ran some additive through my fuel tank 
Okay, so I ran some Wins Gold Formula diesel injector treatment through a tank of fuel. So what I did is I ran my fuel tank down to almost empty, did a performance test, a sort of 30 to 70 mile an hour performance test, took a reading of the miles per gallon from sort of general driving around town, and then I poured the additive in, well, I filled up fuel, poured the additive in, and then I ran that tank of fuel down to a very similar mileage and compared the results. Okay, so that video will be uploaded very, very soon. It'll probably be my next video after this video. Okay, so that will be uploaded very soon. One thing that I accidentally did whilst filming that video was that I almost ran out of fuel. I did a performance test with six miles range and I knew that at the end of the dual carriageway where I was doing the test, there was a BP filling station, but it was closed. It wasn't just closed, it was actually demolished. So the range here, the range figure here, it says 77. I took this down to zero and I still had to drive a couple of miles to get to the garage. And in that time, I mean the car, it went into limp mode, pretty much at zero. And I had about another five miles to go. And after about two, three miles, the car started to kind of cough and splutter and I was really struggling to get it above 40 miles per hour and it wasn't like limp mode a 50 mile an hour limp mode this was this couldn't even get to 40 I mean it, the car was just lurching and coughing and it, I do believe that another mile it would have actually run out it got to the garage just in time filled up and it was all right and after that it was fine so it makes an interesting video you know, what happens if you take the range to zero and you keep driving? What happens? How far will it go? Well, I don't want to actually run out of fuel completely because then you're going to bleed the fuel filter and it's the right pain. But I, I think I was pretty close. It was pretty close. Okay, so that, that'll make a little video in itself, really. I might upload it as part of the additive video. might do it as a separate video. Um, we'll, we'll see. So what else have I been doing? Okay, so these little things here are actually toilet system washers. There's a washer there from Screwfix. This is called a Siamp. It looks like Slamp, but it's Siamp diaphragm washer. And there's also an alternative one from Homebase. Okay, ball valve service kit from Homebase. It's like three pounds. This was about five pounds. And what I'm going to try and do with those is replace the rubber diaphragm that's in the bottom of the air filter box. Okay, so in the bottom of this box is a hole and Land Rover used to fit a rubber diaphragm or maybe they always have fitted them but they fall out, I don't know. But it's amazing the amount of people that don't have one fitted. Now, if you go wading without that, water can come up through the airbox into the engine wreck the engine actually saw this happen with my own eyes whilst out at Salisbury Plain with some other Freelander 2s one of them went through a deep puddle took in water hydraulic lock engine wrecked bit of a nightmare really um, and it's just something that Unfortunately, it's happening because people think, oh, my air intake's here. It's like really high up. Yeah, there is a duct in here. It comes round and in, but there's a big hole at the bottom of the air box letting in water. Okay, so it completely defeats the object of a sort of wing air intake. So what I'm going to try and do is fit these in the bottom of the air box and see if that works. Um, one other option would be some kind of active system with a little sort of float switch and a, and a pump or a, a beeper or something that sort of alerts you that there's water in there. Um, oh, you've got water in your air box. 
you need to stop urgently. Um, if it had a pump as well, then it would self-purge. It would be like a bilge pump and it would just pump out the water if any gets in there. Um, that would be uh, a little bit of a sort of sledgehammer approach to the problem, but it would be pretty cool. So might do that, we'll see. What else? Diagnostics, Autel AP200. This was recommended on the Facebook group. Okay, so this, this there are many, many diagnostics kits and code readers and things available. Uh, I, up until now, had a really cheap eBay special that cost 15 pounds. So I bought this one, uh, I actually bought it on Amazon. I paid about 60 pounds, but I think I could have probably got it for about 45 if I'd have shopped around. There is actually an Autel store um, I was warned that this might not be genuine. Looks pretty genuine. I don't know, really. I emailed the Amazon seller and I got a odd reply that wasn't in very good English, which basically said, we don't know, we're just the seller. So I then contacted Autel themselves and I got uh, an email back saying, don't plug this in. It's counterfeit, it's fake. It's a cheap import from China. Uh, so I thought, oh dear, I wasted 60 pounds. And then about an hour later, I got another email from someone else at Autel going, oh, it's fine. The ones on Amazon are genuine. So I'm now like really unsure about this. I bought this about a month ago when I, when I broke down with my crank sensor issue. And I haven't even taken it out of the packet yet because I'm bit scared to plug it in in case it frazzles my ECU or something so I'm gonna have to just go for it I think really either that or send it back but um, I, 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 I think it'll be okay um, so this is a Bluetooth module so you plug it in under the steering wheel you run up an app on your phone and it gives you all sorts of details of engine fault codes and you can reset you can do all sorts of things you reset your abs your airbag electronic parking brake dpf don't have one of those don't have one of those uh steering angle sensor i've got one of those but it's not faulty uh this will be the service the service light and apparently you can reset things like the battery um the, the battery, uh, so this, this car's got the stop-start, okay, so there's a battery monitoring system, BMS, and really all it does is sort of monitors the, the charge cycles of the battery, monitors the, the voltage and presumably does some calculations of current and charge and things like that, and it, and it kind of knows if the battery's got enough charge to be able to restart the car when the engine automatically cuts out, when you, when you lift the clutch in neutral, um, if there is enough charge and you're not running things like air conditioning or heated screen or whatever else, uh, the engine will stop. And then when you press the clutch, it will restart. Um, when you fit a new battery, you're meant to go to the dealer and pay a lot of money to get that reset. But I never bothered. I, I'm on my third battery now and Every time I fit a new battery, it, it, the, the eco stop start just starts working again, no problem. So I've not bothered to get a reset. When I have been challenged on that by some people who are in the trade on the Facebook groups, I've pushed them and I've said, well, why do I need to get this reset? It's working. What, what, what else can I get? You know, what, what, why pay all that money? for a dealer to kind of plug in his kit and do a reset if it's already working. They couldn't really give me a straight answer. In the end, they just said, well, it's what Land Rover say we're supposed to do. Okay, right, fine, but I don't think I need it. So I didn't bother and it's working fine. But now that I've got this, I might actually better do that reset and do it for free without sort of going to a dealer or a garage or somebody to do it for me and then I can actually see if it makes any difference at all. I don't think it will but I stand to uh, be corrected if it does make a difference. Um, I will be amazed if, if, if 
you know, there's some sort of magical kind of change in the way the car behaves. Um, if, if the eco stop start is working and you do the reset and it still works, well, yeah, no difference really. So we'll see, we'll see. I don't even know if this will do a reset actually, but um, I think it will. I'm sure somebody said it does. I'm sure somebody says it said it does. So that's that. Okay, I mentioned that I broke down the other week. Well, I kind of broke down, the car kind of jerked and coughed and stopped at the side of the road, wouldn't restart. In the end, before a breakdown recovery truck could get to me, I got it going again. So I just did a battery, reset, uh, battery disconnect for a minute just to reset everything. Um, sprayed a little bit of WD-40 around on some of the sensors and connectors and the car started back up again and the culprit was the crank sensor okay which is this black thing here now the crank position sensor crankshaft position sensor as this is known sits down kind of like it's like down in there somewhere behind that wheel down the bottom of the engine because it's so low it gets really wet and it gets covered in mud and the connector that's on here uh, even though it's supposed to be a waterproof connector can get water in it when i took my connector off there was definitely evidence of muddy water inside there was even some grass or something that had got in there somehow okay when i fitted the new crankshaft position sensor the car has worked perfectly since um no issues at all so and no errors or anything so that's what the problem was that was what caused it um these sensors are about 40 40 pounds from euro car parts you can buy them elsewhere for less money but uh it, it's quite easy to change see my last video i think it was my last video showing how to change that okay so what is this blue thing here that you can see so this blue thing is a little 3D printed sort of box. What I'm trying to do, even though this has a supposedly waterproof connector on it, it would be nicer if that connector had a second layer of protection. So some sort of housing around it, just to give an extra barrier to water and mud getting in there. Okay, so if you do a lot of wading, this, this, the seal that's around that connector is just not, it's not sufficient. I don't believe it's sufficient. I, I have, I have sort of had a lot of feedback on this recently on the Facebook groups. Um, some people feel quite strongly that it is not required. This housing is not required. Uh, it's pointless. It's just a waste of time and effort. Well, let me at least try it. Let me put it on my car and see if it works. Um, if it does and it makes things better, I should go through some deep water and we'll see if we have any problems. It's very difficult to prove this is actually saving me from some kind of breakdown peril. Um, but it's one of those things, isn't it? It's, it's just extra protection. Um, the idea here is that this is a, a sort of 3D printed thing that you you pull the connector off, you pop that on. Now this, this design is not finalised yet, okay, so this is just a prototype. That goes on there, you plug your connector on and the wire comes out and then you, there'll be, this, this needs to be taller, and there'll be a little kind of screw lid that just sort of, kind of like, traps the wire but not in a bad way just grips the wire grips the wire um, and then you could put a little bit of sealant you could always put a little bit of sealant around there or underneath and you've got then a completely sealed waterproof housing over the connector which has also got a waterproof seal on it or supposedly waterproof seal and you can then wade to your heart's content without worrying at all about water getting into that sensor and stopping your engine and causing you a right load of problems. That's one of my recent developments that I'm working on at the moment. It's work in progress. Um, have a look at my Instagram.
page for regular pictures on what I'm doing on that. Okay, so what else? We're nearly there. We're nearly there. I'm going to show a video soon on drilling through the bulkhead, running wires through. So if you have uh, amber lights or roof roof uh, light bars and things like that, and you want to run wires either through to the battery or um, through and up or through to switches or whatever, um, I found a place to go through the bulkhead. I just need to drill the hole, put a grommet on it and stick some wires through it. Okay, so that will be coming up soon. Um, LED bulbs, LED bulbs, I'll be doing a video on LED bulbs soon. So LED main beam, LED side lights, just about to see there. And I'll also talk about LED reverse and indicator and brake and side lights and all that kind of fun and games really, because there are certain bulbs that you can just swap to LED and it just works. There are some that don't. They need ballast resistors, they, they're not bright enough, they flash the indicators at the wrong speed and that kind of thing. Okay, so, so um, there's a lot to talk about there and it's a video that I've been meaning to do for ages. Lastly, uh, well, actually before I conclude, I've bought some oil for my K&N air filter. I've put my sticker on now, K&N air filter in here. Uh, I've got this oil that I'm meant to, well, it's actually two parts. It's, a, it's an oil and a, a cleaner. So I don't know quite what I do with those, spray it on or something, I'm not sure. I don't know, I haven't even opened the box yet. So um, I'll do that at some point. Oil my, oil my air filter and, uh, and I'll video it and I'll put that up so you can see what to do if you're running a K&N air filter. One other thing that I need to talk about is my rear wheel bearing. Okay, so my wheel bearing up there, passenger side, UK passenger side rear wheel bearing is on the way out. I know it's on the way out because when I turn right, it makes a rumbly noise. So what I've bought, oops, I bought a spare hub. Okay, so it's the whole, it's not just the hub, the hub carrier even got some old drum shoes here and I'm going to try and uh, dismantle this clean it up and then with my new 10 ton hydraulic press here which is not actually assembled uh, there's a load of bits missing but uh, um, bits that are still in the back of my car but I haven't bolted to it yet but I'm going to get my 10 ton hydraulic press going and I'm going to press out the bearings somehow. There you go. So the hub is that bit, that's the bearing, and all of that needs to be pressed out. Uh, there's also this this um, trailing arm rear bush here, which uh, is in a bit of a mess. I'm going to replace that with a new one, which also needs pressing in. Okay, so rather than take my car to a garage and pay, I don't know, £300, £400 for a new bearing and hub, they'll probably probably replace the hub as well. I might even replace the whole hub carrier. I have seen the bearings for sale with the whole hub carrier. I guess it depends where you go. Um, when I had a wheel bearing done on my Volvo years ago, uh, I made the mistake of going to Quick Fit and ended up paying over £400 for a wheel bearing. So my thinking here is that if one is on the way out and it's 400 quid, then I've got three others that are going to go soon. Okay, so I'm talking over £1,000, £1,200 at least. So for £300 I've bought myself this hydraulic press from Machine Mart. I bought an old hub which was for sale on eBay for about £50. The bearings are about £25. That bush was about £10. I can actually do this myself at home, video it so that there's a good video for YouTube. 
for you all to watch. And I've saved a fortune and then when any other wheel bearings go or maybe wheel bearings on other Freelander 2s, I can help people out and lend them my hydraulic press or whatever to uh, uh, to, to, to do others you see so it, it sort of pays for itself in no time now this hub here you'll notice is pretty rusty so what I'm going to try and do just as an experiment is I'm going to try to do a bit of electrolysis okay so I've got some soda crystals here these are not um, it's not uh, caustic soda which is sodium hydroxide or something like that that it's not that this is this is um, sodium carbonate there you go so it's it's still cost it says it's not caustic soda yeah sodium hydroxide uh, so it's sodium carbonate okay so if you dissolve this in warm water stick that in a plastic box a plastic box with warm water with these dissolved and then you use a car battery charger Okay, but you connect one to the item and then you get an old bit of scrap steel, like an old brake disc or something, and you connect that to the other crop clip here and you run it for a couple of hours at sort of 12 volts, five amps or whatever. And uh, apparently all the rust comes off and the rust then sort of goes onto the other piece of metal, the sacrificial piece of metal, okay, uh, leaving our hub. Uh, gleaming like a brand new hub so it might be worth trying might work might not who knows but uh, yeah it's worth trying worth trying it's a bit of fun so that's that on the parts and the projects I've been talking for a lot longer than I thought I was going to talk the only other thing that I'd like to talk about quickly is my brand if there is one. My brand Beavis Pits. Okay, so I've got a bit of an odd situ really. I've got Beavis Pits for my YouTube channel, but my website's FL2 Lift. My Instagram is Beavis Pits. I really need to change my website to Beavis Pits, okay, um, so that everything's under the same name. So what I'm going to do over the next six months, I've got BeavisPits.com and Co UK, and I'm going to start migrating fl2 lift across into the new website at the moment one beavis pits just points to fl2 lift and it'll eventually be the other way around okay so if you go to fl2 lift it'll redirect you to beavis pits but it's going to take a bit of time to sort all that out okay so beavis pits is the brand that i want to use going forward i'm going to phase out fl2 lift fl2 lift i i, I chose that name because i was making lift space it was the only thing i was making at the time now I make all this other stuff, uh, I, I kind of need to have a bit of a rethink on that, okay, so, so we shall see, this time next year it'll be beavispits.com, okay, everything will be under the same name, so I, as I mentioned, have Instagram, so beavispits on Instagram, it's a public uh, profile, so you can follow me, if you want to and I'm going to be uploading pictures and little video clips of things I'm doing usually as a sort of a, uh, a sneak peek for the, the YouTube videos that we're gonna follow I'm also on Facebook uh, on two Land Rover Freelander 2 Facebook groups I used to administer the Freelander 2 Facebook group uh, I've now stepped down from doing that and I've passed that over to a guy called Stephen who is looking after that with the help of a couple of other guys. Um, I've recently joined another group called the Freelander 2 Off-Road Group that's run by a guy called Joel. He's a lovely guy, he's a sort of an outdoor uh, Bear grills kind of outdoor instructor type. Uh, he does a lot of rock climbing and that and he uh, knows Salisbury Plain like the back of his hand okay so he's really into off-roading he's got a brilliant Freelander 2 with loads of modifications he's even got my Ember strobe lights okay so look him up it's uh, Joel Self Outdoor Instructor I think is his channel and he runs the off-road group 
Since I've been a member of the off-road group, I have posted quite a few pictures and links about what I'm doing, my YouTube videos, my products. Um, sort of fallen foul slightly to the rules lately. They have a Trade Tuesday, which is when you're meant to advertise and put up anything that may be considered a trade post. Um, so recently when I put up uh, project updates, things like this, people have said, oh, well, you know, you're advertising your product. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not selling it yet. I'm not selling it. it. It's something I'm developing for my car. But of course, if I am going to be selling that soon, then it could be considered advertising. Okay, so I, uh, I need to kind of post about the things I'm doing on a Tuesday. And in the meantime, Instagram is the place. Okay, so Instagram, if you want to know what I'm working on right now, the latest pictures, the latest projects, and you can't wait till Tuesday, or you're not in the off-road group, then look me up on Instagram, Beavers Pits. Okay, right, that is it. Very, very long ramble there. Apologies for the length of this video. It wasn't meant to be that long. I know I go on a bit and I do take a long time to say something that most people would say in half the time. Okay, so thank you very much if you're still watching and don't forget to like and sub subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram if you're not already following me on Instagram and have a look at the Facebook groups as well. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much. See you soon. Thank you. Bye.